Hello there, welcome back to IndyCar. Um, a quick programme today, um, basically just to respond to what happened last night on the leaders' debate. Now, always it's the same thing. Whenever I hear there's going to be a leaders' debate and it's going to be staged by the BBC, um, I can pretty much be certain of what it's going to be like. So it's almost not worth tuning in to listen to it because you know exactly what's going to happen on these programmes. The questions are going to be loaded heavily in favour of the union and the... Uh, the independence parties, the Greens and uh, and the SNP are going to be vastly outnumbered by the number of representatives from unionist parties. So all of that remains the same. What was interesting about it, I think, though, was the fact that the only person really who was obsessed with in independence, last night at least, was Douglas Ross, the leader of the Tory party. And he seemed to be isolated, actually, in terms of the leaders who were present at the show last night. I only saw a few clips of it. I didn't need to see much of it, but I've read the reports from various sources this morning, what was said, and I'm not really surprised. Um, I think what was nice to see was that the, the Greens co-leader uh, got a look in and emphasised the fact that the Greens are in there swinging. In fact, that they're polling extremely well at the moment, and given the current polling uh, which was published today, the SNP look on track to win 71 seats, which is a, a record. I mean, it's two seats more than they got in 2011. So if that happens, then this is wonderful. The Greens, on the other hand, are also looking to increase their, their uh, tally of seats um, from, I think it's eight at the moment. I'm pretty sure they've got eight at the moment, uh, but their tally will rise to 11. So that looks like what roughly 81 uh, seats for pro-independence parties, and that's a majority right there. So, what was the point of Douglas Ross last night? Well, the point of Douglas Ross last night is he's only got one argument, uh, and the only argument the Tories are interested in is to deny us the right to choose. And that's what all of this boils down to. Everything about Scottish independence boils down to one single um, injustice, and that is the fact that under the voting system in the United Kingdom, anything that happens in Scotland doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we vote for, or what we don't vote for, or what we vote against, we will never be able to trump the English voter, because according to Douglas Ross, England is superior to Scotland. The Union Jack has to fly higher than the Saltire. And everything that we're hearing from the Tory party and everything that we're hearing from London, and let's face it, Dross is just a mouthpiece for everything that's coming out of London. Everything that comes out of there is to try and reinforce this ridiculous um, and completely outdated and redundant series of pronouncements that say that Scotland is, is inferior to England. And that's what this is about. It's about the fact that we don't have a true democracy in Scotland. We have a short choke chain, one that restrains us from ever being able to override anything which the British government decides to do. But we all know this, and we expect this kind of thing uh, to be discussed in a leader's debate. Nicola Sturgeon made the point that she was um, wanting to make sure that we come out of the pandemic in one piece, and that once that's finished, her primary aim is to go for this referendum, and she supports the right of Scots to choose. Now, the, the thing is, there should be no question about the right of Scots to choose. That's what democracy is about. How any party which claims to be democratic, as the Tories claim to be, can then say that they want uh, everybody to have democracy except Scotland is just a, an unsupportable and untenable position for anybody to take. And so that's what it all boils down to. Interesting, the Labour Party uh, last night under Sarwar was a bit restrained, and he's coming across as a little bit more, what shall we say, a little bit more conducive to cross-party cooperation. It was the Tories who stood out as the only party who were not interested in working across party lines to make a better Scotland for everybody. The Labour Party indicated that it would work cross-party, even the, the Liberal Democrats, who are largely irrelevant, said the same. We know that the, the Greens are, are working hand-in-hand -in -hand with the SNP to make the country better, according to their own Green agenda, which is fine. Those are their principles. The SNP's position is well known. All of this it was not a surprise. What's interesting is that the polling today is still rock-solid in favour of independence, with 8% of the population left who are still undecided. Now, it's interesting that it's 8%, because, as you may know, about 40% of the Labour vote is in favour of independence. And if you think about it, if Labour Party were to get, say, about 
20% of the vote, and 8% of that 20% is in favour of independence. Um, you know, that, that, these two figures actually look quite the same. If you take 20, sorry, if you take 40% of the Labour vote as a, as a part of the whole vote, you end up with roughly 7 or 8% of the population. So it could be that these 7 or 8% who are undecided are actually Labour voters who might be intending to vote for independence later, but I'm not going to say that in a poll at the moment because this is a general election and they have to support their own party. If it were true, and it's a big stretch, okay, but if let's assume it were true that this 8% was that 40% of Labour voters, then you would be looking at a massive vote for independence of around 60% which is um, a remarkable thing to contemplate. But as I said, this is supposition, this is guesswork, and it's not fact. However, it's interesting uh, to remember that not all Labour voters are anti-independence, unlike the Tory party, which is completely anti-independence, which makes Labour uh, a little bit odd. It has a foot in each camp at the moment, and typical of Labour, it cannot seem to get its butt crack off the, f the political fence at the moment. It would be nice to see Sarwar finally coming over to the light side of the force and actually backing independence and moving away from the one nation Labour mantra that we've had for so many decades, which has let Labour down. Sarwar knows that his party's policy in 2014 was responsible for its demise in the current political landscape in Scotland. Siding with the Tories doing their dirty work in 2014 has absolutely wiped Labour out as a force in Scotland from what it used to be. Um, its place has largely been taken by the SNP in this regard, with most of the social policies coming from the SNP. But underlying that, uh, the SNP still has a very middle-of-the-road um, kind of free market economics basis to its economic model of Scotland. And that's something which I think will change with time. Um, the social policies that they're putting in place still do not address the problem of land ownership. They still do not address the problem, at the moment at least, of the housing crisis. Then the SNP is promising at the moment, I believe, to build 100,000 new homes um, by the end of this decade which is a reasonable um, kind of plan to have, but it's not, a, it's not a guarantee at the moment. And I think there needs to be more of a commitment to far more social housing as part of the SNP's plan, but we'll see what comes up. I think as far as I'm concerned, as I said at the beginning of this um, short programme, the main factors that are governing everybody's vote at the moment is this right to choose. Now, in a democratic society, we all should have the right to choose what our country does. The fact that we are being, or Douglas Ross is attempting to deny that is the root of the entire problem. If you believe that democracy is about people in Scotland being able to decide their own future, then you need to vote for independence. And the only way to do that is to vote for the SNP first and the pro-independence party second. I am staying out of the argument about the Alba party, the Greens and anybody else who is on the list at the moment because it is too complicated, it's too messy and it is divisive to start wading into that argument again. I tried to do uh, a piece last week, as you know, about the, the, uh, the uh, Alba party, but it remains to be seen what effect it has on the polls. At the moment, um, the feeling I'm getting from many commentators is, and this is basically from both sides, is that Alex has left a bit late to come into the fray. Uh, it was expected, at least I expected, the Alba party to announce its presence a week previously. I was expecting it to happen sooner, and it happened a week later than I thought it would. I've been hearing rumblings about it for quite a, a number of weeks, so I knew that something was coming, but I expected it to happen sooner. So, with today being the deadline, actually, for... Um, for parties to declare the list of uh, candidates, we can only hope that if Alba is going to succeed, that it's done everything in the nick of time. However, that's a, that's a question for another day. But what's important at the moment is you're going to see more of these debates on the television and the results will be the same. Douglas Ross is going to moan on and on about how we are not allowed to have a choice and that we should just shut up and uh, accept what happened in 2014 as a fact and get on with our lives. But that's not what the issue is here. The issue here is democracy. The issue here is the, the lack of democracy in Scotland. We have a tiny play school democracy at the moment, which is not allowed to make big decisions about its own future. 
This is called infantilization. This is this idea that Scots are not able to make decisions about their own future, that we're not smart enough, that we don't have enough money, we're too small a country to do it. This is nonsense. We, we have proved this time upon time over the last few years, in fact, before and since the referendum in 2014, that Scotland is not only big enough to do this, it's vastly wealthy for its size. So there's no argument uh, about the fact that Scotland can afford to do this. The argument is about how we resist the Tories and their anti-democratic stance, their um, insistence that we are not allowed to vote in our own future. Now, denying an entire country its own self-determination goes directly against the United Nations Charter. We know this. So the question really is, once we have had our election, and I expect all of us to turn out, and I don't mean we're just going to sit back and expect the SNP to win, we're going to get out there and vote in even larger numbers than we did in 2011, because the turnout in this particular election is absolutely crucial, and the turnout in the next independence referendum will be even more crucial. It's about the numbers voting. We get enough people mobilised, there is no way that the Tories can stand before the tidal wave that's coming. There is a tsunami of uh, pro-democracy support in Scotland. This is not just about independence. This is about a basic human right to be able to decide the future of your own country and not have that decided by another country. The Union, when it was originally signed, was a union of crowns. It was a union of monarchy. It was not a union of the nations initially. There were two unions, the Union of the Crowns, and then there was the Union of the Parliament. So basically what we have is a royal union and a parliamentary union. But Scotland was not extinguished by that union, despite the efforts of the British state to try and obliterate all Scottish culture and to try and remove all sense of self-identity that Scots have, that has failed. The, self of, the, the sense of self-identity returned over the last 10 years. Not only has it returned, it's not going to go away now. People expect it. So the next few weeks leading up to the election, you will hear a lot more of the same, and it's going to seem pretty monotonous. But the polls are not lying at the moment. The polls are very, very steady just now. And unless something happens to upset them, it would have to be something really dramatic. Um, I don't see um, I don't see any huge threats on the horizon at the moment. But don't forget, the British state is renowned for its dirty tricks. So we can expect some kind of dirty tricks. They will do everything in their power to dig up some more scandals about the SNP. They might even try to nobble the Green Party. They will certainly try to big up the Alex Salmond party because the Tories believe that Alex Salmond is still divisive and they are still trying to fight this Alex versus Nicola battle. We mustn't let that succeed. If you are planning to vote for Alba, fine, do that. If you're planning to vote for the Greens, also fine, do that. If you're planning to vote SNP 1 and 2, also fine, do that. But let's stop arguing over the last votes and let's get on with actually winning the election. This election is going to be won in the constituencies, remember, and that's the first vote. And it's that turnout and it's that vote which is most important. And that's what you need to keep your eyes on. How you use your second vote after that will not matter so much if the turnout and the support for the SNP in the first vote is absolutely overwhelming. And that's what I want you to focus on. Ignore all the nonsense. Ignore Dross. Dross is literally as his name implies. He is that useless pile of dust that is left at the bottom of a coal bunker, which doesn't burn well, makes a lot of smoke. Not particularly good um, for creating a flame of any kind. So Dross is exactly what he sounds like. He is just that dust at the bottom of the coal bunker. He's the last vestiges of the Tories' grip on power in Scotland. You can't put Scotland back in the box now. People are aware of their right to self-determination because we've been telling them about it for the last 10 years. It doesn't, it doesn't go away. That sense of wanting independence is not just to do with independence, to do with the, the desire for a true democracy in Scotland. We don't have it yet. That's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for democracy first. That means the right to vote on our future. And that's what the SNP is there to do at the moment, is to support that right. The Greens also support that right. The Alba Party supports that right in its own way. I'm not going to argue black is white over the, the differences and the nuances between the parties, but they have that much in common. We all have a desire 
for democracy in Scotland, and we don't have democracy yet. That is what we are really fighting for, the right to choose our own future. See you soon. Bye-bye.